So now in this video we're going to take a look at LEDs and their schematic diagrams right there. So normally when you have an LED often you'll protect it with a resistor. Something needs to limit the current from the power supply. So there's the power supply there. It's actually over there but uh, it's directed over here. We have the uh, positive right there and it runs up and down there and then a little jumper brings it up to the uh, red side over there. And we got negative right there and a jumper bringing it to the negative over there. Normally you'll see the resistor on the more positive side, the LED on the more negative side. So ground is zero and then we have a positive voltage in relationship to that which is five volts in this case right here. It is possible though to put the LED first. So I have that with the uh, blue LED right there. You can see positive comes up. Now that's the long lead, the anode. You have to put it in the right way. Short lead the cathode to a 1000 ohm resistor. And uh, we got the red LED there. 220 ohms is coming from the positive supply there to the long lead the anode. Short lead the cathode to the negative supply. We will zoom back and you'll see that uh, we got about 15 milliamps of current total right now. Not much of that current is from the blue LED even though it's actually looks like it's brighter than the red one. Now we lost about two milliamps of uh, current which is about what we should have lost right there. We put it back uh, so about two milliamps of current is going through there and that means about 13 milliamps of current is going through the red LED. So we lost about uh, 13 milliamps of current right there. So the blue LED is just naturally brighter than the red LED for a given amount of current. And that brings us to our next uh, diagram here. We're going to look at uh, sourcing current and sinking current. Again, we have the uh, LED that we're using. It's a type of diode. Uh, regular diodes don't have the arrows uh, coming out of them. They're called uh, rectifier diodes. But in any case, this side of the uh, diode, the LED in this case, is the anode that has P-type uh, material for the Usually it's a silicon, but it could be other uh, semiconductors. And the bar side over there is the cathode. The anode, as I said before, usually has a longer lead, while the cathode has a shorter lead. So we got that circuit, and I basically built this circuit right here to uh, demonstrate uh, sourcing and uh, sinking current. And usually, in my videos, I'm not using a switch. I'm actually just going to use a jumper in this case usually it's the output of an integrated circuit so both of these LEDs are actually uh, lit right there they have the same amount of current just a little bit is trickling through uh, the blue LED as I said before is just naturally brighter so I'm going to take the uh, jumper and uh, connect where the LEDs connect so we have the uh, long lead the anode where the jumper is for the red LED over there and the short lead the cathode for the blue LED over there now, this side of the blue LED is more positive. If we just want to light up the uh, blue LED, we connect to ground right there. We're sinking current. Normally, you work positive up, down towards a negative, especially on a schematic uh, diagrams, but you don't have to. You do what is most uh, convenient. So it's most convenient right now to keep this jumper out of the way. So I'm moving it up there, even though it is more negative. So the red LED now is off completely. That is because we are uh, at ground. The other side of the red LED is ground. And uh, so any current that goes through the blue LED just goes right to ground. It bypasses the red LED. It does not light up. Now we are going to uh, pop the jumper out and go to the uh, positive supply rail. So again, this is a little more convenient right now because up there the uh, red slots are being kind of hidden by the resistor. But now you can see the red LED is lit up. There's no current through the blue LED right now. Again, for the same uh, reason. We're directly to the uh, positive supply. We are using five volts in this video. And uh, five volts over there, that cancels out the uh, voltage difference. There's no voltage difference across the blue LED. It's all across the red LED. That zero volts there, ground. There's a five volt difference there. So the reason why now it is the source, because it's more positive. So we're talking about conventional current. It's something they came up with before they knew about electrons. They thought maybe a positive uh, fluid-like force uh, flows through stuff, even though now we know it's the opposite. And when it comes to sinking, again, this came up before they knew about electrons. Moving more positive, now 
our uh, switch here is sinking. It's dropping down to zero volts right there. Which brings us to a polarity indicator circuit. Not really one you see much, but it's nice for uh, studying electronics. So normally, as I said before, the resistor is on the more positive side of the circuit and then ground, the uh, lower voltage is on the other side. So the green LED will light up. We're gonna say that's good in this case, green for good. Uh, we're using a 1000 ohm resistor, so there won't be much current. We could go up to uh, 12 volts for one of these points. And then of course ground is zero volts, uh, the other uh, point. I only have the power supply set to five volts at the moment though. We'll uh, come back to that uh, later. So in any case, short lead, the cathode of the red resistor. So normally I have the anode above the cathode on these, but uh, in this case, we're going the other way there. Short lead, the cathode is going to the resistor right there for the red LED. We're gonna wire the green LED parallel to the uh, red LED, but we have to put it in the opposite direction. And uh, so we got the long lead, the anode, to the resistor up there. And a short lead, the cathode, down one row. So I'm going to stick it right there. So parallel has the exact same connections as the red LED, but it's wired in the opposite direction. Now we're going to take a red jumper and uh, put it to the uh, resistor up here and then to the uh, positive supply. And uh, the blue LED we're going to put to the uh, negative supply over there. And you're going to see the green LED light up right there, green LED. Now we're going to, instead of uh, swapping the wires, the uh, wire doesn't actually tell you uh, voltage or polarity or anything, the wire uh, color. Just generally you pick uh, like wire color and stuff to help uh, indicate. But now we actually have the opposite polarities of uh, what the wires show. You can see we've got red to blue up there and then blue to red up there. So basically we kind of know something's wrong. We got a red LED lit up. So now the uh, red LED for using a 1000 ohm resistor is not very bright. As you can see, only about uh, two milliamps of current. This isn't completely accurate, but it's, it's close enough. So we can go up to uh, 12 volts and you're gonna see that the uh, current uh, more than uh, doubled. It went up a lot from somewhere around about two milliamps to about uh, nine milliamps. So, we got uh, 12 volts now, red LED is a lot brighter. So now we're gonna improve the polarity indicator circuit by giving each one of the LEDs its own protective resistor. So we have 220 ohm right there, it's gonna protect the red LED. So this time we're gonna put the red LED in the opposite direction when it comes to uh, the resistor that we did in the earlier one. So longer lead the anode to the resistor, the shorter lead the cathode. It's gonna come down to uh, this jumper right there. And the green LED, uh, I got blue on there, but uh, green LEDs have basically the same electrical properties as the blue ones for the most part. Uh, so longer lead the anode is gonna go to this jumper. So the uh, longer lead the anode down uh, lower. Let me make sure I look at that right and a shorter lead the cathode up to uh, the resistor right there, 1000 ohm resistor. So we're using the same voltage, it's five volts right now, but uh, different color LEDs, we're gonna make sure the red LED has more current flow through it than the uh, green one. And so we got uh, more positive up there. We're gonna put uh, more negative down there and I'll try not to uh, block the view. And you can see the red LED lights up. So it's uh, fairly bright right there. We are working with uh, five volts. We can go up to uh, six volts in this circuit. You can see we got 13 milliamps of current. If we want more current for uh, this resistor value, we can go to six there and the resistor shouldn't get too hot. We're gonna look at picking the uh, resistor for current and making sure the resistor doesn't get too hot later on. Now we're gonna swap uh, polarities. So we're gonna go uh, positive or uh, negative up there, I mean, and uh, positive down there and you can see that the green LED lit up it's about the same brightness as the red LED but a whole lot less current and we're gonna demonstrate this again with the regular circuit I got 5 volts on there but we're actually gonna use 6 volts with the power supply 220 ohm resistor is about the minimum you need to protect the red LED from the uh, 6 volts right there so we got that the red LED is uh, pretty bright there. And instead of blue, we're gonna use the green again. So we're gonna wire it the same direction as the red. We got positive on top, negative on bottom, same direction right there. They both have their own protective resistor. So this is absolutely vital. We could even go higher in resistance there. The green LED wouldn't be as bright. Also, 
that red LED just may not be as bright as some other red ones, but uh, uh, green and blue are definitely a lot brighter uh, than red. So in any case, there you can see, they are both lit up right there. They both have their own uh, protective uh, resistor. If we tried to give them the same resistor, then only the red one would light up because the green one is dropping more voltage. So we got about 21 milliamps of current. So since I'm lighting more than uh, one LED in a lot of these circuits, I put the power supply to limit current to uh, 40 milliamps, but we didn't even need to do that. We're uh, barely above uh, 21. So I'm gonna have them share the same resistor and you're gonna see that uh, the green LED doesn't even light up because the red LED just passes current so much more easily. And you can see that it is wired up uh, because it lit up when I yanked the red one out. But uh, I put the red one back. The current just flows through the red one so much more easily than the green one. It doesn't even try. The voltage doesn't build up across the green LED enough to light it up. So it is very important, not just because they might need different uh, value resistors, but because there's a good chance, even if they're the same color, only one of the LEDs will pass current if the current has to go through the same resistor that's trying to go through the two of them. So now we're going to look at a really important electrical property. We saw a little bit of an example of this uh, before. So this is basically saying like that's a good spot to take a voltage measurement right there. We're going to do that with the uh, multimeter. But uh, that two volts, that is the forward voltage of a red LED it may also be called the knee voltage and it's the voltage that is dropped So you might hear a voltage dropped dropped from the resistor in relationship to the supply voltage So it takes about two volts when a red LED is forward bias to actually light up It doesn't just light up because one side is more positive than negative It has to be it's actually about 1.5 volts before it starts uh, lighting up a little bit But uh, generally speaking, it's about two volts and uh, when it it's uh, about as bright as that. Whereas uh, blue and green LEDs take about three volts. So it had about two volts across it when we put the green one parallel to it and the green one won't light up because it needs three volts, but it was only letting uh, two volts uh, build up and then current pass to uh, hold that voltage. But in uh, any case, it's better to take uh, voltage measurements. So here we got my uh, multimeter, can measure many things. Voltage is really simple. All I have to do is set it to V, it does the rest. If there's numbers, set it to a number higher than the voltage you can expect to measure. I can leave the red probe there, black probe there. I only have to move the red probe for high current for uh, this meter. So as we just saw, we can expect about uh, two volts across the red LED. Again, it varies a little bit with how much uh, current is flowing through. But there we can measure, there we go, pretty much spot on two volts. And electronics is not exact. You're, you're kind of getting, you get estimates whenever you uh, do stuff with electronics. But in any case, there you can see that out of the five volt supply voltage, only about three volts is across the resistor. That's why I mentioned voltage drop before. It looks like we're losing a tiny bit of voltage in the, uh, the wirings there. But there you can see uh, five volts. Now, if we uh, yank the red LED, as I showed in the diagram, the uh, blue LED drops about uh, two volts. So make sure that's going in the right way, right there. We got the blue LED a lot brighter, and because uh, they're just naturally brighter for the same amount of current. So there's more voltage across the blue LED. We needed about three, as you can see right there. So that's only putting about two across the resistor. That's why there was less current with the blue and the green LEDs with the same value resistor. So we got five volts from the supply right there, and uh, three in this case are dropped, the voltage drop of the blue LED while it's forward bias, leaving about two volts across the resistor right there. So the forward voltage, the knee voltage, and its voltage drop is very important when you're studying circuits like these. So one thing we can do if we need to or we desire to is uh, stack those voltages. If we put two red LEDs in series, they're going to build up about uh, four volts across them instead of uh, two. So we're going to take the red LED right there. And uh, so that's just one. We can see we have about uh, 12 milliamps of current. So uh, 0 0.01 two is uh, about 12 milliamps. And so I'm gonna move the resistor up one spot 
and so the red LED is not going to light up yet until we put another red LED in series with it. And now you're going to see we actually only have about a third of the current because we dropped two more volts out of five. So instead of three volts across the resistor because we dropped two, now we're dropping four volts leaving only one volt across the 220 ohm resistor. About a third of the voltage across the resistor about a third of the current going through the entire circuit there. And again, while you're learning electronics, you want to take a voltage measurements of it. So again, we're going to look at the supply voltage. It's the same right there. And we're going to go across uh, one LED. So it's probably not building as much voltage because current's lower through it, but it's basically two volts right there. And we can look at the LED there, uh, two volts there. And you look across the two of them, four volts. So again, it's not exact, it's electronics, but uh, pretty good estimate. So we got four volts there. Now we only got uh, one volt across the resistor right there. And uh, just uh, it's probably a spec higher uh, because the low current means they're not building up uh, quite two volts as much as they would at higher currents there. So let's take a quick look at that. Right now we got the... Uh, 1.9 there let's yank the other one and with just one we're gonna have more current going through the LED and uh, so it's probably above uh, two right in there and the spec above two so it varies a little bit with current but for the most part you can see it's pretty close to the same value even though we changed the amount of current flowing through it by a lot and as you can see here, I did uh, make a diagram. This is uh, more analytical. We broke down. There's about 2 volts across that LED, about 2 volts across that LED. So whatever the supply voltage is, in this case it's uh, 5 volts, we're losing about 4 volts across the resistor. We measured that. There's about 1 volt across there. When we have these two red ones in series, and there's 5 volts across the entire circuit. So now we're going to look at another challenge when it comes to electronics. We have uh, just one 1000 ohm resistor, but it has 10 volts across it. That's going to give us about 10 milliamps of current uh, through it. You take the uh, voltage across it times the current going through it, which is a 0 0.01 amps there. You multiply them together. 10 times 0 0.01 is a 0.1 right there. That's the wattage. So these are one quarter watt. They're rated for a maximum of 0.25 uh, watts, but you want to keep them below 0.125 for safety reasons. And that's a little bit below. So we don't want to go uh, much lower. In resistance here, the heat's going to go up uh, fairly quickly. So that limits us to about uh, 20 milliamps of current. But what we can do is put another one in series. And then each one of them will pass uh, 10 milliamps of current. Each one of them will get uh, just as hot as if they were by themselves. But there will be a total of uh, 20 milliamps of uh, current flowing through. Again, this isn't uh, completely accurate. Maybe it's a spec below 10 or something. But uh, we're just shy of uh, 10 milliamps of current. We're going to move this resistor over. And you can see there, now we got 20 milliamps of current. But as long as these aren't uh, too close to each other, so they get good airflow, they are passing their uh, own current. And so uh, it is uh, fairly warm. Now it's not in the same row, so only one is uh, passing current. But now we're going to uh, leave a, a space there between the resistors. And that one's uh, quite hot there. So. We got them there and we're going to take the LED and uh, make sure it's in the right direction. There we go. So about 15 milliamps of current because again it's dropping some of the voltage. So we're going to bump that up to uh, 12 volts and we are basically back to the same current. So we can't really use a lower value resistor with the uh, 10, I mean the 12 volts right there that's powering the LED because the resistor will get too hot. But with just one resistor, there's not enough uh, current. So what you can do with the uh, LED, if there's uh, too much voltage, you can't use a low enough value resistor to get the current you want. You can just put the resistors in parallel before they come to the LED right there. And then so whatever current flows through each of them will combine and uh, go through the LED as we saw earlier. 
So now that's it for demonstration circuits. We're going to just look at uh, some numbers, uh, do some math here. I already did the math, but uh, basic takeaway. If we're only dealing with 3.3 volts, red LED is going to drop about 2 volts, about 1.3. You don't need much resistance, 100 ohms right there. You're going to get about 13 milliamps of current. So you could go down a little bit, especially when you look at the uh, power rating. So that's the current in amps though, not milliamps. Uh, so 0 0.013 times 1.3 voltage across the resistor. That's how much heat the resistor is gonna generate. So this is a pretty efficient circuit there. The LED is gonna get pretty bright. The resistor is not gonna get terribly hot. Now, the blue LED or the green LED drops about three volts. There's hardly any voltage, uh, 0.3. And uh, by the way, before I forget, so you can see 0.3 right there. Uh, sometimes instead of the decimal, which may be hard to see, especially on some older schematics and stuff, they just take the V for the voltage and put it where the decimal point is there. That's why it's 3V3 three three there. I uh, figured I'd put that in there because that will pop up from time to time and might be confusing. And uh, so in any case, with uh, only about 0.3 volts, because remember, we're dropping about 3. So this 3 doesn't exist anymore. We got about 0.3 volts across the resistor, setting the current through both of them. And uh, so 15 ohm resistor, very low value resistor, we can get 20 milliamps of current. It's going to build up hardly any heat. This is a very efficient uh, circuit. Uh, almost all of the voltage is being converted into light. It's actually being converted to a uh, current, but uh, that current is producing light instead of heating a resistor. It's barely heating the resistor. So again, when we got uh, 5 volts, then we have the uh, red LED. Now we got the same current that you can see up there, but it's uh, nowhere near as efficient. We need more power because the, the voltage is higher. So we need a higher value resistor to limit the current. The resistor is generating more heat. So you're not getting as much light as the blue LED. Uh, more of the power is going to uh, heating the resistor in this circuit compared to uh, that circuit. Now, we looked at uh, the LEDs in a series right there. Now we're going for that 20 milliamps of current though. So we had to lower the uh, resistor. It's one third the value. If you remember, we had one third of the voltage across the resistor than we did with a single LED. We looked at that earlier. So to get the same current, we're gonna need one third the resistance. That's why you learn this math. Uh, it's very simple once you have it down. It may seem confusing at first, but once you have it down, you understand circuits a lot better. So we are even generating less heat right there for the same amount of current because more of the voltage is being dropped across the LEDs. So there's two LEDs, so you're getting twice as much light as uh, that one up there uh, for the same voltage. So it's the same power being consumed, but instead of heat, I mean, there's still some heat, but instead of heat, you're getting more light right there. Now, nine volts, as you go up in voltage, as uh, we kind of saw above there, the resistors get hot uh, a lot quicker. And uh, so we have here a 470 ohm, which is only giving us about 15 milliamps instead of 20 milliamps up there. But because of the higher voltage, we need a higher value resistor. And these numbers aren't exact, they're, they're rounded. I think they're both rounded up a little bit. But in uh, any case, there you can see, we're getting close to that limit we set ourselves at 0.125 watts, even though most resistors are rated for 0.25 watts uh, maximum. So. Resistor is getting up pretty hot. If you remember, uh, my fingers were getting quite warm when I was touching uh, 0.1 watt, uh, quarter watt resistors. And uh, so that's the heat we're generating uh, there. Now, with the 12 volts, again, we're getting about the same wattage we did there, but we had to use a resistor that's more than twice the value, even though we're still protecting one LED and it's only three volts uh, higher. So we're going up another third in voltage, or that's uh, three-fourths of the voltage down there. But in uh, any case, uh, 12 volts. Voltage went up a little bit, but a significant amount. But uh, still, we needed a higher value resistor, and we're getting the same heat right there, and uh, less current right there. That's why I demonstrated the uh, parallel resistors. If you're working with 12 volts, you absolutely got a light one LED for whatever reason, you need more than 10 milliamps, you can just put resistors in parallel until their current adds up. You just gotta remember that they gotta be at least 1000 ohms right there if you got uh, 12 volts across them because the red LED drops too. So in any case, that should be some uh, helpful uh, math right there. 
if you're new to LEDs, uh, you should do the math yourself though. And whenever you look at a new circuit, you know the voltage drops of diodes and stuff and the voltage across resistors and everything. That's something you should know. But uh, hopefully this helps you uh, understand what all that math means and everything and why it's important. So in any case, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.